So today we are reading from Shishi Vilapaku Sumanjali by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Verse 41 O Gangeya Gatri Girl with a golden body When will I color your excellent nectar like lips that are red like bimba fruits with lipstick of katechu mixed with fresh camphor will the krishna parrot suddenly come then and forcibly bite them. O Gangia Gatri, girl with the golden body, when will I color your excellent nectar like lips? that are red like bimba fruits with lipstick of katechu mixed with fresh camphor. Will the Krishna parrot suddenly come then and forcibly bite them? Notes Sri Raghunath's prayers for devotional service that are resting in his heart flow on like a clear stream of ever-increasing emotions. It is as if Srimati Radharani sits in his heart and soothes it. A wonderful relish of love of Krishna can be tasted while serving Priyajis. Radhika's lotus feet on the bank of her kunda. Without worshipping Sri Radha's lotus feet and taking shelter of her divine abode, Krishna's sweetness cannot be relished. Srila Raghunathas writes in his Sva Sankalpa Prakasha Stotram Without worshipping the dust of Radha's lotus feet, without taking shelter of Vrindavan, where her footprints are lying, and without conversing with those whose hearts are filled with deep love for her, how can anyone enter into the Shama Ocean? Without... Ah, uh, yes. Right there. Kishoreji asked me to to share something, so I will try to 
before we continue, I will try to share something <laughs> for the pleasure of Gurudev, Radha Mohan, and all devotees. Mm. So in these words, we can see how Raghunath is serving Radhika's lips. But with these same lips, Radhika is serving a Mohan. So this is the perfection of Seva. Perfect circle in which everyone has his own proper position. Manjari is serving the lips of Radhika for specific purpose because she knows that Radhika is eager to serve Mohan with her lips. We can imagine which kind of service it can be. It's not necessary to speak about that. Also, in very close connection with this seva is the seva of serving Radhika's white teeth, which are like a pearls, so attractive. And with this, with little smile, this white, bright pearls of Radhika's teeth are attracting Mohan. And she's also serving him in the way which is not necessary to speak about. So this is Paraki above, in which Manjaris are diving, then they are putting Radhika more deeper in this ocean of Parakya Ba, and then Radhika is putting more, more, deep, more deeper Mohan in this unlimitless ocean. So everyone here has his own position, his own place, perfect place, in the perfect realm, Vrindavan. So everything is full circle of perfection. And Raghunath, in his so-called external consciousness is praying to do this seva. But Baba is very nicely saying how he is praying. He is praying through his heart in which so many streams of emotions are. This is not religious prayer. This is devotional prayer. Religious prayer is always focused on person who is praying. Please help me. Please give me. Be merciful to me. Yeah, this is okay. But this is another step of prayer. And we should listen the nectar of this stream of prayers from the heart and lips of eternal Nitya Siddhas. Because in their heart is always flow, or always, like Baba say, ever increasing emotions. And because these emotions are ever increasing, the prayer is full of passion.
anurag. And by just listening and feeling the prayers of, in this case, Raghunath, our heart, like Sadak as beginners, now fits, can melt. And the melting of heart will become stream of our emotions. Only when the heart is melting, then the stream appears in the form of emotions. If the heart is not melting, there is some emotions. But it's not the stream. And what is attract? Uh, uh, what attracts Radhika and Mohan the most? The stream, strong, ever increasing stream of emotions. And conditioned soul cannot manifest it. He needs a help. And he needs to be connected with love. With those in whose hearts this stream is constantly, constantly, ever increasing of emotions are flowing. Yeah, I said something. Kishori, I fulfilled your desires. Maybe my good brothers can say the more. Please. I don't see. Gorovani is here. Gora Chandra. He is in Samadhi. And it's very nice commentary here that without worshipping of Shirada's lotus feet and taking the shelter of her divine abode on two conditions. Taking the shelter of Vrindavan. Yesterday we were talking so much about Vrindavan. And Kishoriji very purposefully Choose this verse. And taking the shelter of Radha, lotus feet, Sadaka can relish the sweetness of Vrindavan, of Radhika, and also of Krishna. Without taking shelter of Radhika and Vrindavan, it's not possible to realize the sweetness. Maybe a person who is very, very sincere can realize different aspects of Krishna. But beauty and sweetness should be realized and relished only through love. And that love is the special gift of Shimati Radhara. So, conclusion is, without mercy of Shimati Radhika, we cannot relish the sweetness of the loving pastimes. Because this is the not ordinary pastimes, full of rules and regulations. This is a loving, amorous pastimes. And by meditation on Radhika's lips, Sadaka is coming in connection 
with her maidservant who is perfectly serving Radhika's reddish bimba-like lips for specific purpose, which is not necessary to speak about. Radhika. Sila Raghunathas writes in his Va Sankalpa Prakasha Stotram Without worshipping the dust of Raghunathas Radhe? Yes, we can hear you. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah. There was some break, interruption, internet? Yes. Okay. Without worshipping the dust of Radha's lotus feet, Without taking shelter of Vrindavan, where her footprints are lying, and without conversing with those whose hearts are filled with deep love for her, how can anyone enter into the Shama Ocean? These are the conditions. Taking the shelter of Radha's feet and worshipping. When someone is worshipping some persons, he immediately takes a shelter. It's not separate. We cannot say, I took a shelter of you, but I don't worship you. I took 100% shelter of you, but I'm worshipping you just 50%. Or opposite. I'm worshipping you 100%. I love you 100%. But just 50% I took a shelter. It doesn't go like this. Everything is going simultaneously. The more person is taking the shelter to Radhika, the more his desire becomes stronger and stronger for worshipping. Because the Radhika is embodiment of worship. The name of Rad, uh, it's uh, some kind of, um, how you call it on English? Glagol, mm, root. It's, it means worship. Rad means worship. Aradhana means the best of the worshippers. Because she is completely surrendered to her lover. So this worship and surrendering is going spontaneously, hand by hand, together. Then second reason is without taking shelter of Rindavan, worshipping and taking the shelter of the Holy Dham, which is so unique. There is no other Dham in 
any spiritual or material creation. Because this is the home of natural love. And like Guru Dev is going to say many times, actually, in Vrindavan there is no devotees. Just the friends, parents, lovers. And it, his explanation about that helped me so much to understand that on the border of Rindavan, let's say border, starts complete spontaneous love, ever increasing emotions to flow in an unlimited stream. And Gurudev said one time, Udav is the last devotee. He came in Vrindavan like a devotee, but because he received association of Rajavasis, he understood my love cannot be compared with their love. And the only way how I can receive such quantity of love, intensity of love, is to become the straw that Vrajavasis, especially Gopis and Radhika, can step on me. So Baba is saying, without taking shelter of Radha's lotus, without taking shelter of Radha, because the footprints are lying on them. The dust, soft, tender dust of Vrindavan is full of footprints. Manjaris are seeing are focused on Radhika's footprints. Krishna's devotees, they see Krishna's footprints. Manjaris are also seeing the boat foot, but they have more attraction for Radhika's footprints. And devotees, who are Radha Adisne devotees, they like to meditate on Radhika's footprints, on her Lotus feet, her lotus souls. And by meditation on these marks, her de their devotion, Sadaka's devotion, are increasing and increasing. And each of these marks has his specific meanings, which is helping the mind to enter deeply in connection with Srimati Radhika. And the third or fourth, I don't know, that without conversing with those whose hearts are filled with a deep love for her, how can anyone enter into Shyama? ocean, satsang, we have satsang rajavase, association with sadhus specifically who are in Manjari Bhav. no other solution, no other solution, they will reveal us Radha's lotus feet, Vraja Raja, the dust of Davan, they will reveal the secrets. And through their mercy, the heart can be sufficiently purified and prepared on another unlimited levels which are coming and coming and coming. 
So Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarve Shastra Hoi. So, so this is the direction. Gurudev, please, please, can you say something? <laughs> no. We need, we desperately need you. You are explaining so nicely, so beautifully, there is no words to add it. Sorry to say. Better than me. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Gurudev, I'm sorry. Then I will close my mouth. I love to listen to you. Only I want to listen to you. Don't do this. It's not fair. And when Kishori is reading, he likes to listen that out. Yeah. Yes. She is inspiring me so much, Greg. She has a great right. feelings. I'm proud of her. And my can I is also very special. He is my naughty son, can I? I hope that I can read to inspire you, Gurudev, that you share something. Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati says, Those who give up Radha's service and try only to taste Krishna's sweetness, only attain a drop of the ocean of nectar. In this connection, it is said that once the world famous Vedantic sannyasi Madhusudan Saraswati came to Braja and gave a note with the words Krishna Sindhu, the Krishna Ocean on it, to some bypassing sadhu, asking him to bring this note to the leading scholar of Braja and to bring the reply of that scholar back to him. At that time, the leading scholar of Braja was Sri Chiva Goswami. When the sadhu handed him the note, Sri Chiva wrote a verse on the back saying, What will you do in the Krishna ocean without worshipping Sri Radha's lotus feet and the dust of Braja that was trampled by these feet? In this way, the Acharyas show that Krishna's sweetness can only be really tasted by serving Sri Radhika. Radha. Immediately we can remember Prabhadananda Saraswati, who was also Vedanti, very prominent person. Vedantist. 
Vedic Acharya. But by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he understood this crucial essence of all truths. And this is love which exists only in Vrindavan. And immediately, when he received this kind of mercy, he forgot about his position, his Acharya Guru position, and he ran away from for Vrindavan. And he drowned in Vraja Rasa or Radha Rasa Sudanili. All unlimited qualities of Shimateratika. And here we have another person who didn't receive the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Baba is mentioning this historical event when this Madhusudan, who also was Vedantic sannyasi, he tried to challenge the pure bhakti. And we can see here that without mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Gora Bhakta Vrinda, it's not possible to overcome all jnana, all vairagya, all positions, and taking the shelter of Vrindavan is possible for someone who received the mercy to take shelter of Vrindavan. It's not, I want to take shelter of Vrindavan. Radhika is in charge for Vrindavan, dust, air, grass, moving or unmoving beings. If Radhika invites someone in Vrindavan, then the door of Vrindavan is open. She can come, knowingly or unknowingly. But Radhika is doing this kind of kripa. And even if the person somehow comes in Vrindavan, without Radhika's mercy, he would never relish the sweetness of Vrindavan. So, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada Saraswati relished and un really understood Vrindavan Rasa. And we can hear confirmation is that without Radharani's lotus feet, no one can understand Raja. It means that without creep of Gorangi, Goranga, lotus feet, no one can understand Raj. In a transcendental revelation, Sri Raghunath says, Ai Gangeya Gatri, O golden limbed girl, when can I color your nectarian bimba fruit like lips with lipstick? made of katechu scented with nice fresh camphor. 
She Radha's lips are naturally reddish. So why do they still need lipstick? For this, one must know what's on the mind of the Savior, the worshipable deity. Shri Radha is full of Mahabhav. It is natural for her to make Krishna relish Shringa Rasa. Two kinds of Shringa. Manjaris is making decoration Shringa to Radhika. And Radhika, like a embodiment of Mechabal, makes Krishna to relish Shringa Ras, loving amorous pastimes. And in that way, he is also becoming the embodiment of Shringar Ras. So first Shringar decoration is meant for a second type of Shringar. Decoration brings to Rasa. The decoration of emotions. I want to color your lips. To color what? With more reddish color. And I'm coloring myself with your Anurag. When I color your lips, their lips will color with Anurag, your lover. And this is the color of love, passionate love. As written in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Radha makes Krishna drink the honey drink of Shama Rasa, erotic flavors. And she always fulfills all of Krishna's desires. The Goswamis prayed to Sri Radha, Please personally teach me how to serve you more expertly. I worship Sri Radha, who considers the tip of Sri Hari's toenail millions of times more dear than her own life, who teaches all the blissful, fickle-eyed gopis expertise in arts, and who is very famous. Rupa Goswami Sradashtakam. The practicing devotee should always think, is she accepting the service that I offer to her or not? I'm only doing bhajan because it gives me personal happiness. I'm doing my quota, nothing more. 
If I don't give myself a certain quota, I won't do anything. But this is not the natural beauty of bhajan. It will be described more, but maybe we can stop here. Natural beauty of bhajan must be full of spontaneous love. We cannot practice mechanical bhajan, bhajan desiring to attain natural love in the place of natural love like Vrindavan. Everything has to be spontaneous, natural, full of attachments, passion, addiction, strong desire behind that. Then Radhika is revealing her mind. Radhika will not reveal the mind to someone who is ritually practicing the bhajan. Why should we do? She do that. But she wants to reveal her mind to someone who is in love for her. And then the more devotee is in love, the more Radhika is speaking to him. I want these ornaments, put on me this dress, cook to they this kind of food for me. He is able by Radha Skripa to hear what his worshipful Swamini wants. And this is the Raga Bhakti. So for that we need the practice. And we have to be aware when we slip away from this kind of practice to very fastly come back. And Baba is giving here some examples, some obstacles which devotee has to be aware. I am practicing bhajan for myself. This is the greatest obstacle for my peace, for my happiness. I was doing my bhajan and I feel so good. I'm sorry, but Raghunath doesn't feel so good. He is crying. He feels the more deeper his bhajan is, he is feeling more separation. And this is a painful. He doesn't feel so good. But this kind of pain brings him relishable rasa, which we, like a sadhaska, has, we have to relish it, to experience this. Otherwise, it's empty words. I miss my Swami. This brings me little pain. I have little love, I have little pain. And that's okay. But I want to recognize this little love and little pain. And then I will receive experience that this pain brings me to the more love experience. And when devotee Devotee's heart is filled with this kind of experience. Then he is in the ocean of love, in the ocean of his own swarup, in the ocean of seva, 
in the ocean of emotions. Little love, a little pain. The more love, more pain. And this is the greed from the soul, not from the body. Body doesn't like this. <laughs> Doug. Bhajan is beautiful when you feel some want, some void. I've got my meals, I'm healthy, everything's okay. If you think like this, your bhajan will be lifeless and mechanical. How many worldly things like profit, adoration, distinction, money and fame a person like me misses? But I never miss Radharani at all. But the great devotee's thirst for bhajan can never be quenched. Just as the thirst for water of someone who suffers from cholera can never be quenched. Narottam Das says, Krishna is the greatest amorous hero. Be very thirsty for him and worship him in the mood of Braja. Expertise in bhajan does not depend on anything else. There won't be even a whiff of empirical knowledge. Fruitive works, profit, adoration, or distinction anymore. All these ulterior motives make the mind very coarse. How can one then taste the clear, spotless flavors? of Praja. Ulterior motives deceive us in different ways. Although we know these things in theory, we still don't realize them. Although I know this in theory, Although I'm talking, although, although I'm talking to the others, this is just a theory for me, because I'm such a fool that still I'm very attached for adoration, for the profit, self-promotion, ambition, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then I am asking myself, why, why my bhajan is not so clear? Because another thing is very clear to you. The world of Maya is very clear. You are not confused at all. But when you come in the contact with the clear, with the purity of pure transcendental love, then you start to be confused. 
because you are trying to mix your Maya consciousness in this eternal consciousness. So for that, we need also our homework, personal homework. And this is the sign of devotee who is really sincere. It's not that he will succeed in his homework, no. But Guru will see that he is trying to do his homework. Radhika, Nitai will see, Vaishnavas will see that he is trying to do his homework, although he is useless, and he will give Kripa that person Sadaka can overcome this disease. At least I understand this. At least I think that it works like this. Because bhakti doesn't depend on anything. It's completely independent of knowledge, of austerity, of uh, fruitive works, profit, all endeavors. Bhakti is completely independent because love needs independence to be surrendered to be loved. Many people are trying to subdue bhakti by a knowledge, philosophy. They are big plans and projects. They are trying to subdue the bhakti. But it doesn't work. Because bhakti is independent. And every activity, and the one great mystery, maybe Gurudev can confirm it or maybe smash me, but the great mystery is that all other processes are depending on bhakti. And if there is no just drop of bhakti in other processes, there will be no results of that. So bhakti is this essence, the essential thing which is connected to everything. Essential. The results of jnana cannot be attained without the drop of bhakti. Result of yoga, karma, and so on, so on, so, so on, cannot be attained without a drop of bhakti. But we can put oceans of jnana in the bhakti. She doesn't react. She's always young, fresh, and doesn't react on these old guys yet. Especially in Vrindavan. Everything, all these guys, Jnana, Vairagya are old guys. Only Bhakti is young, ever fresh young. And in that way, she is independent in her love. Kevala Bhakti. Rade, Rade. Only short, my dear. <clears throat> Radha Dami is just a girl in love. <laughs> she is the most sweet girl and she is in love. Why she should share her feelings with a scholar? 
why she should share her feelings with a yogi. They have no interest for that. Cannot connect to that. She is eternally 14 years old and she is in love with Shan. <laughs> that is what she is. There is no space for knowledge or yoga or uh, fruitive workers. Why she should share with people who have position and have knowledge and Um, that just came in my heart by your mercy, Goranga Sunda. Nade, nade. <clears throat> Sorry, I came late. So beautiful Goranga Sundara and uh, Gora Chandra. Today we have read. Uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Chapter 22. And Prabhupada mentioned, the path of knowledge, mystic yoga, and denunciation has nothing to do with a pure soul. So Jnana Bhairaga does not, nothing to do with pure soul. So Bhakti, concerned, pure soul, especially Swarupa. So this is Guru David stressing, especially this Raganuga Bhakti is concentrating in this point. So this is Guru David's teaching, Rade Rade. Sripad Premananda Thakur has written in his Mana Shiksha. O oh mind, you just don't understand. You say that you are beyond the Vedic regulations, but you perform forbidden activities. When I see this, I see your very essence. You call liberation a luxurious distraction and have thrown it far away. Give me a hint so that I can understand this truth. Leading, useless riches are always desirable. And you are going mad thinking about it day and night. You outwardly perform rituals without desire for gain. But you are not able to free yourself from the same. In your speech, you are detached from the material world. Who you call my everything is the same everything you give only a lousy banyan leaf to. And you think that it is yours to give. You say, I worship Vrindavan. But you are happily staying at home. You love exterior trappings. You're satisfied with praise, but 
are enraged when insulted. How did you manage to destroy the happiness of your soul? You say that you follow the copies, but what do you understand about the meaning of that? You can't let go of your nature one iota, not even a little bit. You get pleasure seeing the face of material nature or women who swallows you whole. Listen, says Premananda. If you think about it, it's all a ball of confusion. What's to be gained by listening or flapping your mouth? Always chant Hari Hari while you traverse the path of love. And you will surely be cleansed of all impurities. By taking full shelter of Sri Harinam, Maya will go far away. I'm taking shelter of the holy name. What can Maya do to me? A dauntless devotee should think like that. Srila Raghunathas Kuswami is in the kingdom of spiritual lilas and says, O oh, golden-limbed girl, I have colored your lips now. Do you know what your lips are like? Like the most excellent hardened nectar. Swamini says, Lips are not liquid, are they? Why are you calling them nectar lips then? Tulsi says, I myself don't understand. He who understands it has made me understand. The chakora bird that lives on nectar alone cannot live without drinking the solid nectar from your moon-like face. He doesn't drink it. He chooses, he chews it. And you keep him alive with this nectar. While Swamini hears this, a golden effulgence comes from her body. That's why Tulsi calls her Gangeya Katri in this verse. How blessed is this Dasi that she can make Swamini mad by making her relish these words. Swamini says, But then, why did you apply color to my lips? Aren't they naturally reddish? 
Tulsi. Will some black Krishna parrot come and forcibly bite these lips unless I apply this color? He'll only come when he gets a hint from you. If he gets a hint, if he gets no hint, he won't come. You may shake your head and say, no, no, making your nose pearl swing and your eyebrows dance. How wonderfully beautiful you are at that time. There will be a yes visible in all the no's that you exclaim. It is as if all the no's will be swallowed by a big yes. Swamini is overwhelmed by ecstasy when she hears Tulsi's words. And it is as if this Leela appears before her eyes. This Leela will actually be visible to the spiritual eyes of those devotees who have developed love for Radha and Mohan. Swamini is, after all, the embodiment of Mahabhava. Tulsi concludes by saying, O Shyamaju, do you know why I colored your naturally reddish lips? with this Kadira lipstick. The natural color of your lips will stay on the lips. This is not a solid color. It is liquid and it will look very beautiful when it is transferred to a black spot. When I see a red spot on Krishna's black cheek, I will feel fulfilled. In this way, Tulsi makes Swamini relish sweet rasa through her choking words. The stream of Sri Raghunath's transcendental visions flows on. Shri Rasika Chandra Das sings, O golden hued Radhe, when can I fulfill my desires by coloring your lips that are like a stream of nectar? In an astonishing way, with the best Katechu lipstick mixed with camphor. These lips are already as beautiful as ripe bimba fruits. But now they will become even more beautiful. When the Shyama parrot sees this, he will become very enthusiastic to bite them to his mind's pleasure. Thus ends the verse 41.
Vishwari, would you like to read the verse again? I just came late. I, I'm sorry. Today, so many devotees are coming, and I had to. Radhe Radhe. Nice. Hare Krishna. Hare we were reading the verse 41 from Sri Shivilapku Sumanjali. O Gangeya Gatri, girl with the golden body. When will I color? Your excellent nectar like lips that are red like bimba fruits with lipstick of kadechu mixed with fresh camphor. Will the Krishna parrot? suddenly come then and forcibly bite them. So Gurudev, can I ask something? about this verse. We read that Swamini is asking Tulsi, why are you coloring my lips? They are already naturally reddish. And then Tulsi says, Will some black Krishna parrot come and forcibly bite these lips unless I apply this color? He will only come when he gets a hint from you. And then she says, how when Radharani says, no, 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 and shakes her head, and makes her eyebrows dance and the nose pearl move around, then Krishna will see that, oh, she's saying no, 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 but it means yes to him. Lovers once said no, then is a yes. And they said no, no, not one time. They said many times. Why did they say, no, 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 because why you are so late? You cannot understand my feelings. So they no said, no, no is one thing, and no, no, no is other thing. No, no, no means yes, 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 and no means no. Miss, why? I oh, why I put ornaments? Why I decorate something only for you, and you are not coming? You don't understand my hint. But Mandiri is so close to Radhika. She understands, and she is in Sevaras. Always Gaura Sundar say, my Gaura Sundar. Manjali is at Sevaras. I like this person. Why Sevaras? Because he is in Rasika. Ambhava. Okay, not only it's Mahav, Manjali's are in Mahabhav because she is the shadow of Radhika. So she is happy when the 
Swami is bite by Krishna. That lip is bitten by Krishna. It's a, when there's somebody bites the lip, it's a painful. But this bite, Manjari's want to see that. Lovers come and give that pain that she realized from suffering pain. So, her suffering of Radhika from Krishna cannot subside without the biting of the leaf from the bumblebee, Krishna. This is Seva. Oneness of the feeling of Pratika. But this oneness of feeling, not Manjiri is much in the Pratika. They are two and they feel the same feeling of Radhika Manjari. And that is how last Your happiness gives me happiness. When you are happy, you are satisfied. I'm happy. And that's the service of Manjari to make Yuga Lapaja bring to Krishna me and to her son. That is the meaning of Krishna. Sri Vrindavan is Yuga Lapaja. In Sri Vrindavan, in Manjari Bhav, we always in Sevadas for Juga Lopaji. That is the prayogen of our soul. There, what go there gives blessing. Guru, that is the blessed. They give and give that practice to ours. That is parampara. And we go other parampara. So we did. Disregard Guru Dev and make my parampara. That is the yes, I am not in Sharnagati of my Guru Dev. I want to create my parampara, my way of our love. But this is the only way. What Mahajan Rupa Raghunath instructs. Read more uh, half an hour time. Why to finish there? Sunniti come for sharing. Why not Sunniti is coming in the picture? Because in the Thank <laughs> you.
Jananda Maharaja and, uh, and Tarun Baba, they have to be in the picture. Tarun Baba? I think he's not here today. But Jananda Maharaj is here. Gora Chandra, Gora Vani is here. Share by read something. I will read again. Other more. Krishna tightly when will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird with eyeliner With even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird? With eyeliner. Goranga, you can like Ninety percent of Zoom. I was talking. <laughs> Let's others are talking. Please. Really? Oh. Yes, my dear. Dainanda Maharaj. Share something of the ropes of Srimati Radhika's eyes. They are like ropes. So this is the power of Mahababa. And Radhika's actually any any sense organ especially eyes very powerful to steal mohan's heart because radhika's eyes always moving and looking for Moham and uh, Radhika's eyes like arrow. Mohan see Radhika's sidelong glances. He shoot, shoot it. And then completely, uh, what is it, uh, drown in the sweet rasa of Mahababa, especially Madanakya Mahababa. So this especially only Radhika 
could have such power. Krishna's uh, Madana Mohan and Krishna steals Cupid and Krishna attract all whole universe. Practically speaking, all gopis. But Radhika has special power. Krishna saying in Chaitanya Charitamrita, who can, uh, who can steal my heart? Who can control my self? Someone who has hundred times more quality than I. So that is Radhika. Because Radhika means supreme worshiper. Radhika could please Krishna most. So therefore, uh, Mohan is heart is stealing and shoot it. And this is also the meaning of Kama Gayatri. So this Radhika has so much power, who has five arrows, especially eyes so powerful. This verse is exp uh, expressing Radhika's power of Mahababa, means greatest love for Mohan. So Suniti, please, please uh, more add and give, give us some feeling and realization. <laughs> oh, you are so sweet, Jainanna. Maharaji, yes, Shrimati Radhika's eyes. They tied out the elephant. You know, the elephant is very difficult to control. It's a very big animal, a wild animal. And only one very expert, expert person can guide the elephant. And here we're here, not only guiding, but tie down. The elephant is Krishna. He is so much in love. He always wants to enjoy. So we need someone, like you said, who is perfect, perfect in controlling the wild animal, the wild elephant, Mohan. He is wild because Shimati Radhika, look at him. Her, her, her eyes, they spark his feelings. So when we have someone like Srimati Radhika who has the power and is the power of feelings, of desires, of passion, and someone like Mohan who wants to be enchanted and who is the enchanter himself? But now the enchantress, the power of the enchanter is tying down the one who is so powerful. That is the beauty of this. That Shimati Radhika, who is the power of the most powerful, the power of love, the power of enchantment, of magic, of erotic looks. She can look at him and he is stunned. He is tied down. Tied down is something that cannot move anymore. <laughs> 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 tied down is like bound, you know? <laughs> I so Mohan becomes bound. He is completely bound by the love of Srimati Radhika. She has the power to control him. 
but not for her own power hungry feelings. In this world, we know power is something that is often misused. Everyone wants to be powerful and wants to show everyone else their own egos and their own abilities and their own this and that. But in the spiritual world, the love between Radha and Mohan is about being powerless and surrendering to that love, becoming helpless, becoming bound by love. I always remember our Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, he often he tell this, to be bound in love, that is Krishna's desire. He wants to be bound in love. Because he himself, he is already so happy and so all, you know, he knows everything. He is beautiful. He is powerful. He is very rich. He has all these opulences. But Srimati Radhika, she has something that makes him <laughs> helpless and powerless in this bondage of her love. And the amazing thing is that it's only by one side long glance. So we see here that all the senses, the spiritual senses, they have another quality than we know from our material body. In this material body, we have different senses and they are quite limited. Uh, now we need glasses and, you know, the ears, they don't hear so well after some years. And after 60 plus, the ears become weak and this and that. But in the spiritual senses, even one one eye, you know, one eye side long glance of Srimati Radhika can bind Krishna so much that he becomes helpless. But this helplessness is the beauty. That's why he becomes Goranga. He wants to drown in that beauty of being helpless in that love, swimming in the ocean of Srimati Radhika's all different, different feelings that she has that he cannot, he cannot, um, he's a foreigner to that. He is a, he is a very good enjoyer, <laughs> but he's an, a foreigner to being enjoyed. He wants to have that. That's why he likes to be bound. And for his pleasure, Shimati Radhika takes that role also. She is binding him. She becomes the controller now. For his pleasure, not for her own satisfaction or proving herself. Sometimes in this material world, the ladies, we need to prove ourselves. I am also powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but Shimati Radhika does everything that she does only for his pleasure. Even when she is looking at him with that sidelong glance, is only to make him faint and become completely drowned in the ocean of her love. That is the beauty of them. They are helping each other to experience always newer and newer uh, oceans and waves. And we know that Shrimati Radhika is making the waves in the ocean of Krishna's heart of Mohan's deep desires. And she makes him experience how it is so beautiful to be bound by love and to be only controlled by one sidelong glance that's binding him so much that this big elephant, that great, you know, strongest animal, is tied and now she can continue to make him more happy. Radhi Radhi. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I had no time today. I was always in Seva. Please forgive me. It's not, I don't want to be here. I'm always thinking of all of you. But at the moment, Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas, they are blessing our homes and Today also Shyama Priya is coming and, and Radha Shakti and Udava and Sachi Baya is coming and we are doing 
beautiful festival here again. Some yagya, some chanting, and so now just Sudevi also come. She also want to be in Zoom today. They were driving for three hours, so we are all blessed by our Seva Gurudev. You are giving us Seva Raz. Thank you, Gurudev. <laughs> Thank you. Radhe, Radhe.